All right, what is up, YouTube? I am so glad that you're here. My name is Harley, uh, and I'm really, really excited to, to be able to actually make this video and to finally say that I am now a official pin tester. Um, that has been a dream of mine for so long, so it's super surreal to actually think like this has happened. Um, and I'm just really, really grateful to have this opportunity um, and to, to share a little bit about how I did it, you know, explain my story and then, you know, hopefully give you guys a, a little piece of information or a piece of advice if this is a, a career path that you're looking to get into. Um, and, you know, that way you can learn from, from me a little bit. And uh, I've got a lot to learn. You know, I'm definitely still new and I'm a beginner in this field, but um, I, I love to give back in any way that I can. So if you're on this video to, to hear about my story and to learn how you could maybe become a pin tester too, you're in the right place. So welcome to my channel. I make all types of videos about ethical hacking and penetration testing and just security in, in, in as, a, as a topic in general. So um, if you like that type of content, definitely do check out some of my other work. I'll have it be popping up all around. Um, and, and hit the like button, subscribe to me. I, I've got some awesome content about man in the middle RDP attacks um, or showcasing some of the latest vulnerabilities like zero logon. Um, and just really, I've got all types of content. So check, check out some of my stuff. Um, but I kind of want to share a little bit about my story and give you guys an understanding of where I come from. So I'm going to hop off webcam here to make this full screen. And uh, yeah, so I'll give a little bit about my background and that way you know who it is that you're talking to. So my name's Harley. I live in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. So if you're in another country, I may not actually, I don't know if this stuff is gonna be relevant to you. I hope it is, but I honestly don't know. Um, but if you live in the US, I can share some of my experiences here. Um, but basically, I, I found out that I wanted to become a pin tester from a really a, a pretty young age. I was 14 years old when I first, when I really first knew that like hacking was cool and that's something I want to do. Um, so, I mean, it, it really all starts for me when I was playing a game online and this guy hits me up and, and he's like, hey, let's let's hop in a Skype chat. So I get in his Skype call and he comes up with this crazy scheme. And, and long story short, he drops a phishing link. So I'm looking at this phishing link. Um, you know, I'm looking at the page and I'm 14 years old, right? I've never seen anything like this in my life. I never even thought it was real or possible. Um, but I noticed a few things were off, like the copyright year was a little bit outdated. Uh, there was like a broken image or two and the, the URL said like .tk instead of .com, right? So I knew, okay, th there's there's something not right here. Um, but I was so intrigued. Like, immediately I was hooked. I, I had to understand how it worked. Um, so I spent the next couple of weeks just diving in, trying to find all of the information I could online, like how to make a phishing website and playing with remote administration tools and dealing with key loggers and, and all kinds of stuff, pranking my friends, pranking my family. Um, and as I learned more about it and I got more into it, I realized like, this is, this is really scary stuff. Like I've got the ability to look through people's webcams if I wanted to. Um, and I've got the ability to like launch a key logger and, and get people's stolen credential like it was really really crazy to see that as a, a 14 year old kid living with my mom like i was able to just figure this out on my own and sure i didn't really understand what i was doing but i wanted to understand it better so when i found out a school in town had a uh a, one of the first cybersecurity degree programs in the in the country i was like yeah i'm gonna jump all over this right so i'm 24 years now 24 years old now that was about 10 years ago when i first found out about you know the world of hacking um, but as I went through school, I, I realized like, like, this is, this is what I wanted to like IT is awesome. And, and there's so many different paths to go down. So I went into school for cybersecurity and networking, but I only have an associate's degree. You know, I don't have a, I don't have a bachelor's or a master's or anything crazy like that. Um, in fact, my associate's degree is really my only actual credential at the moment. Like I, I have some uh, vendor related certifications and certs that I got through my school, but for the most part, I don't have like any industry recognized certs. Um, so you don't necessarily need to, to go to college and have a ton of certifications to make it. You just have to be able to communicate your skills. And I'll talk about that a bit more. Um, but I'm going through school and, and once I get out of school, I started working at a small MSP. Um, so I, I started my way in help desk and quickly I just kind of spent, you know, time outside of, of help desk or outside of the, the eight to five 
um, you know, actual typical work day, just trying to learn as much as I could outside. So I would be, you know, setting up new users and troubleshooting printers and whatever for that first year. But then I started to upgrade into more of an important role, doing more like sysadmin type work and network admin type work. And as I gained more and more knowledge, I also was trying to, to apply that knowledge in like a security context. Like, okay, well, this is how we how we install and deploy Windows servers, but how do we harden them? How do we secure them? And then eventually I got to the point where I'm like, okay, now how do I break into them? Because that's always been where I wanted to shine. Um, so I started building out like home labs to, to mess with at home. And I started to just like read as much as I could. And, and you know, don't get me wrong. There were, there were definitely times where I was like not doing everything I needed to. And there were periods in my life where I was just so unmotivated that, that I didn't, you know, do any extra studying or anything. But for the most part, overall, I think that I could say I was a very motivated person. I just wanted to extend my knowledge as much as I could. So fast forward, I'm uh, four years into my MSP job and um, I, I finally started doing a lot of other things. Like now I started an online blog. I started this YouTube channel. Um, I started giving back a little bit to everything that, that I started to learn. I just started to give back. And you know, I, I, there were some channels that helped me along my way, like the Cyber Mentor, right? That's a great, Heath Adams, he's, he's got some great content on YouTube. Um, he's got some great Udemy courses. I've gone through all of them and I highly recommend them all. Um, practical ethical, ethical Hacking, Windows Privilege, privilege Escalation, and Linux Privesk. Um, so he's got some great content that I think helped me along the way. Um, and I started, you know, after watching some of his stuff, it made me realize like, this is actually possible for me. And so about a year ago, that's when I started consuming all of that type of ethical hacking content that I could. I, I signed up for the OSCP, the, the original PWK that was recorded in like 2013, right? Because this was last fall that I signed up. Um, so I signed up for that and I, I went through all of that course materials. I got on Google and I was just like searching for any sort of infosec security meetup that might be t uh, local to me. And I found some security groups that were in town and they met up once a once a month, every every month at a pub. And so I just started going to those events and I started to meet as many people as I could. And I made connections on LinkedIn. I followed people on Twitter. Um, you know, I started going on the OSCP subreddit and I just started to, to, as I learned things, I would help others. And then I would ask questions myself and people would help me. I started joining Discord chat and and slack channels for some other security related like groups of people and that's really what it came down to is just meeting as many people as you can putting yourself out there whether that's online content or going in person to events um, and just always being open to talk to people and I think that that's what really set me apart from from others that might just fill out forms or apply to jobs you know and so that's my story. <laughs> um, I, I just recently left my MSP job and now I'm starting as a, as a contracted employee um, or I guess like an independent contractor for a security um, pen testing firm based out of Seattle. But it's all remote and I get to do it from home. So it's fantastic. And I'd love to, to talk more about that and my experience working there um, if you guys are interested in hearing about it. But now that you guys understand a little bit of my background and I know I'm a bit all over the place, but I want to share, you know, some, some, I guess, why this is important. And, and hopefully if you have questions about, is this the right field for me? And if it is, how do I get into it? I, I'm, I'm hoping maybe I can share some of my experience and, and shine some light on, on those questions. And hopefully you'll walk away from this video knowing whether or not this is a career path you want to go down. And if it is, hopefully you'll know a little bit better about how to do it. So understanding the why I think is very important for any career choice that you that you choose. But for pen testing, I think that it's also very important because there's so many different reasons people get into pen testing or think that they want to go down pen testing. Are, are you in it for the money? Um, you know, pen testers, they make a lot of money. They really do. Um, you know, especially once you're established, it's not it's not abnormal to be making over six figures very quickly within your first couple of years. Um, so yeah. I mean, obviously, that's a huge lure for a lot of people because there's not very many people, there's not very many pen testers that are uh, that are out there with the skill set needed to do the job well, according to the amount of demand that there is. So, yes, supply and demand obviously is going to demand a, a higher wage. So, 
are you in it for that? Or are you, are you in it because you're passionate about this? Like, does money not matter to you? That's the boat that I'm in, you know, like I, I don't care about the money. Honestly, if it was, as long as it was enough to, to pay my bills and, and, you know, like make even like $15 an hour, I'd probably still be in this field. Um, just because like, I love it so much. And, um, you know, that, that passion I think is going to be what sets, the people apart from those that are just chasing the money um, versus those that are actually in love with what they're doing here. So, and honestly, I think if you don't have the passion, I don't think you're actually gonna gonna make it long term. You know, because after after working 40, 50 hours a week, you might be really burnt out if it felt like a job to you the whole time, right? If you're just looking for that paycheck. But for people that that love what they're doing, um, you know, they're going to work those 40, 50 hours, but then they're going to come online and they're going to create content like this, or they're going to stay up and read about the latest vulnerabilities. And they're going to be giving back any knowledge that they've learned to people, and they're going to be trying to learn from others, right? This, this is a field that you'll never stop learning in. Um, and so if you don't have that passion to drive you and keep you going, I'm, I'm not sure you're going to make it. Sex appeal? Is that why you're in it? I mean, I know that that's kind of kind of funny or whatever, right? But like, I know when I was a kid and, and when I was going through school, I say when I was a kid, that was only like five years ago. Um, when, when I was going through school, the degree program was cybersecurity and networking, right? Like, that's such a broad field. Like we could get into blue team type stuff. We could do incident response. We could do compliance. We could do auditing and, and logs. Like that is a whole separate thing that's unrelated to the red team and unrelated to pen testing. Um, so, but but if you ask any of us, if you ask like 90% of, our, of the people I graduated that class with, um, I think any of us back then would have told you we want to be a pen tester. And I think it's just because it was sexy, right? Like we can get paid to hack stuff. Like that's awesome. And, and it's going to be like the movies all the time. So, I mean, honestly, I think that that's a real misconception about this job. Um, don't get me wrong. I love it. And I do think that it's sexy to be like, yeah, I'm an ethical hacker. Like not actually, but you get what I'm saying, right? So I, I think that for those that just want to be able to say like, oh, I'm a hacker and I'm in it for the money, but I don't have that passion to drive me. I, I think you're going to have a tough time. Some other characteristics about being successful in this field are related to your personality. Um, I think it's really, really important that you're personable. I think that you need to be able to tell a story and pull an audience and, and be able to communicate well. Um, you know, you can you can be the the strongest tech guy ever, and and you could be this crazy master hacker. But if you can't communicate to somebody why that matters and why you were able to break into something and how they need to fix it properly, if you can't communicate that it's almost like it's not, it's, it doesn't matter. Like, like at least not for helping others, right? And I think that that's another personality trait that you have to have in order to be a successful pen tester is you got to like helping people because that's ultimately what you're doing. Um, so if you can't communicate well, I think you're going to have a tough time. Um, and I think also strong communication skills are going to be super important and helpful for you with just getting into the field to begin with. When you're in an interview, if you can tell a story about why this is the right field for you, how you know that, and then what you've done, I think that that's going to set you apart from other people who just say, I like to hack stuff. Yeah, I play with a home lab. Yeah. I, I know I know about that attack vector, right? But if you can't communicate a story about like this is it for me, <laughs> then I don't know. I, I think you're not gonna stand out as much. So being personable is also gonna come in super helpful for the next slide because this is probably the most important slide about getting into this field. And that is network, network, network. And did I mention network? And I'm not talking about like TCP IP. Um, I mean, meeting people, talking with people, joining discords, joining local InfoSec meetups, going to security conferences, going to the OSCP subreddit or any other subreddit like NetSec. Um, just you need to meet people and you need to put yourself out there. Um, you could do this also by going and creating an online blog or creating your own YouTube channel. Like you need to put yourself out there and you need to shake hands with as many people virtually because we're in a, a COVID landscape now, but you just need to, to really meet people. Um, and that's, that's how I actually got the job that I have is I was just meeting everybody I could and talking to as many people as I could. Um, I think when you start 
going online and you apply for a job posting, you know, like, oh, a penetration, penetration testing opening is, is here and available, submit your resume. There's 50 other people that did that same thing. And unless you know somebody, you're especially if you don't have any experience, you're you're not going to be picked over some of the other people in the group. So it really does come down to who you know and like how how you're able to communicate with them. When I first started doing some of the the local infosec meetup groups, um, I just would would talk. I would literally walk the whole room. <laughs> like we we would be at this bar, and I would talk with someone for ten minutes, and then I'd politely excuse myself, and I would talk to the next person for ten minutes, and then I would do that again, and I just continued to move down until I knew every single person that was there in that group, and for anybody that I could, um, I would ask them like, hey. Can we connect on LinkedIn? Can, do you have a Twitter? Like, can I, can I connect with you on social media? Can we exchange business cards? And, and I think that that was something that really, really helped me because now I have a better understanding of the type of people in my community that are there. If the, my community is a super like, you know, helpful community or if they're more of like everybody just figures it out on their own. And I think you'll find in this community in general, people love to help each other. Like people love to help each other up. So um, that, that's a great, great thing to be a part of. Um, but yeah, just making those connections and making all those people, that's how I find out that that's how I got my first interviews at places. I, I interviewed this year, probably with like six or seven different pen testing companies before I ever had a, a single win. Um, but each of those interview opportunities came from either me meeting someone at a group and then asking them if they know someone or um, reaching out to, to recruiters or reaching out to people directly on websites like LinkedIn. I didn't get a single interview by, you know, posting a, a job thing online or, or, you know, going through like a job board and, and submitting my resume. So networking is going to be super critical for you. And while I mentioned earlier, I went through school, I only have an associate's degree. Um, if, if you're going through school now, network, use this as an awesome opportunity to, to meet with people. That's one thing that I do wish I went and got my bachelor's or my master's for is just to meet new people. So finally, I really only have one other tip here. And I think that this is super important as well. And it's just staying, staying up to date and gaining as much knowledge as you can. Um, you've got so many different places where you can get free knowledge now that your, your possibilities are just limitless. Um, you're in an awesome place right now. You're on YouTube. I think that there are so many fantastic content creators that produce things for free. I'm trying to get into that category. So thank you for being here. Um, but to name a few, the Cyber Mentor, he's got some awesome series about how to get into pen testing. And he's also got some awesome like tutorials on, on you know entry level hacking and, and really just getting your initial foothold. Um, IPSEC for when, when you're getting into more of like capture the flag, hack the box type things and, and you want to learn new tech skills, go watch IPSEC's videos. It, it's fantastic, the stuff he's able to do. Um, there's some OSCP journey playlists that I like to follow, like JSON Sec has a great one. Uh, Injection has a great one. He hasn't posted anything in a while, but he's, a, he's one of my favorite YouTubers to follow. I just love his story. Um, so YouTube is a great place to go. Udemy is a fantastic place to go if you want to have more of like a structured course feel, um, but you don't want to pay that structured course price tag, right? So like certifications, obviously that's going to be a win-win and I can make a whole separate video on different certifications. Um, if you can afford a certification, if you have the time to commit to one, do it. That like no question asked, do it. If nothing else, even if you fail, even if you don't complete, like that's going to put you in touch with the right people. Um, you're going to get access to forms that you didn't have access to before. You're going to be learning things that other people are trying to learn. And then now you can find those online communities like subreddits or online threads and, and talk with others about their experience, reach out to them on Twitter. Having, you know, like multiple people that are going down a certification path and being able to talk to them, that alone is worth, worth the price tag in my opinion. Um, but if you don't have the money to pay for, for a cert because, yeah, they're expensive, go go take a look at some of the online Udemy courses. TCM has some. Um, there's some others as well. Um, I'll, I'll try to kind of do some, some research and post some links in the description if you're interested in checking out some of the ones that I know of and I'd recommend. Um, and then online blogs and people's reddits. I mentioned you should be doing that yourself. 
Um, but go and look at other people's. They've got awesome content out there and you can learn from them. My blog is is all about just like public note taking, really. Like when I'm going through and doing stuff or when I learn something new, I'll post a quick little blog article about it and then I'll reference that myself later because I totally forgot everything I just put online. <laughs> and like the next time I see it, I'm like, I don't remember how to do that. So I'll go and look at my own blog and I'll follow that step by step. Um, but that means that there's content that I'm creating mainly for myself, but I'm making it publicly available in case it also helps somebody else. And there's hundreds of thousands of people doing that same thing. So the next time you're looking to how to do something, instead of reinventing the wheel and spending a bunch of time and trying to learn how to do that and figure it out yourself, see if you can learn from somebody who's already done it and, and put that stuff online. So, I mean, that's that's really all I can say is, if you're if you're doing these things, I think you're going to be successful in the pen testing world. And I really just wanted to make this video to try to help others that are starting their journey um, or to just share my experience in case people like to hear about it. So let me know what you guys thought. Um, hopefully this type of thing was was beneficial to you. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining um, and I hope that you gain some knowledge. Um, of course, I'm going to plug myself in here again, hit hit the like button for me and hit the subscribe button. That's going to super help me out. Um, you know, I'm just trying to build an audience and, and try to help as many people as I can. So if this is the type of content that you think is worthwhile, let me know. And uh, until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.